As the Omicron variant spreads across the country, many parents are once again wondering about the potential impact of the pandemic and their kids' mental health and emotional health. In the past couple of years, the rate of psychological distress in young people has increased dramatically. 25% experience depressive symptoms and 20% experience anxiety symptoms. Negative emotions like impulsive behavior and irritability also increased. In early 2021, emergency visits for suspected suicide attempts were up 4% among adolescent boys and 51% for girls. We're joined now by Jamie Howard, senior clinical psychologist at the Child Mind Institute. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. How are you doing? Now, the Surgeon General said uh, the pandemic has exacerbated the unprecedented stresses facing young people today. What have you seen the past couple of years in your work? My colleagues and I have never been busier than we have been over the past couple of years. Certainly, there is a huge demand for treatment for kids, young adults, adolescents, adults too. Um, so we're all doing the best we can. And you've probably heard that there's somewhat of a, a wait for a lot of families to get in to see mental health care providers. And so we're all doing everything we can to make sure we can meet this need. Dr. Howard, every parent out there has, after bedtime, had a moment where they think to themselves, reflecting on their child's behavior, is it normal? Are these struggles part of development or is it not? Mm -hmm. Is it a sign I need to worry about? What, where is that line? What advice can you give parents? So we want to look at something called functional impairment. So when we think about kids, their jobs, that's what that's how they function. So their jobs are to go to school and do the best they can, whatever that means for them, to make and keep friends, to engage in activities that they enjoy, and to love their families. So when we look at how kids are functioning, we want to keep in mind these four main areas. So are they engaged in what they're learning? Are they seeing friends? Do they seem connected to you? Uh, these are the things that can guide us when we're not so sure. So how do you know, Dr. Howard, if there's a problem? Because I think seven to eight times out of 10, if you say to your child, how are you doing? They'll say, fine, right. everything's fine. Or they don't mm -hmm. want to talk to you about it whatsoever. So how mm -hmm. do you break through to start a conversation? And what should you be looking out for? You've touched on it briefly. Yeah, so I think what we want to do is, is create uh, opportunities to discuss this, keep an open line of communication. A lot of times we don't have great vocabulary for talking about our emotions and our behaviors. And so the more that you can bring the conversation up and normalize it and not necessarily jump to um, a dramatic kind of conversation, kids hate that, especially teenagers. So the more that you yes. can sort of they chill and continue to engage them, um, the more likely they will wait, be wait, to Wait, wait, Jamie, up. Jamie, what did you call that fake chill? Is that what you called it, <laughs> fake chill? You, yeah, well, you want to be chill. Try and fake it till you make it. Even yeah. if you have to fake it, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jamie, um, I was once told when it comes to my own mental health, uh, treat it like mask falling from above on a turbulent flight. In other words, um, assist yourself before you assist your child. Mm -hmm. So for parents or caregivers that might be dealing with their own mental health issues, what advice do you give them before they go and approach their own kids? Absolutely. There, there's, so, there's so much importance there because you're modeling taking care of yourself and you're destigmatizing mental health care uh, by getting treatment yourself. So if you can sort of vocalize that and say, you know what, I've been feeling really anxious with the Omicron variant now spreading across the country. Something I'm focusing on is staying in the present moment, even though we have to tolerate uncertainty. That's so much better than sort of getting stuck in worst case scenarios. And so the more that you can talk about it and model what you're doing, the more that your child will feel comfortable to open up to you. So, Dr. Howard, if you've succeeded as a parent and you've been fake chill and your <laughs> child has opened up to you and you've realized that there, there, there's been a break in their pattern of behavior, all that's going right, and you think there's an issue, what's the next step? Who, who do you go to? What do you Google? Well, so you can always Google our website, childminds.org, but another good person to reach out to is your pediatrician or a school psychologist, um, because these people will have connections to care in your community. Um, the thing we want parents to know is there's no harm in getting an evaluation. The worst case scenario is someone will evaluate your child and say, you know, I don't think this is quite at a clinical threshold yet, but here are some things you can do. So there's no harm in that, but there's so much good in getting an evaluation because these disorders are real, they're common, they're treatable, and they're even preventable. 
All right, Dr. Jamie Howard, we thank you for your time and your advice this morning. Thank you. Have a good holiday. Thank Have a good you. holiday. Happy holidays.